this is the third part of our discussion on curves so far we have defined um, what are curves in r3 in a very precise way now in this part we will see that the same geometrical representation of curve okay so we have uh, some path in r3 so the same path can be represented in many different ways for there are many different functions alpha 1 alpha 2 or alpha or beta so these are functions from i to r3 so all of these functions represents the same geometrical shape then what is the relationship between all of these functions if there is any relationship so that is the part of our next discussion so precisely speaking we want to understand what is reparameterization of curves in r3 okay now remember that uh, we discussed this example of a circle where the function alpha is given a cos t a sin t and it is a curve which is contained in the plane and uh, if we take this t to be from 0 to 2 pi and when we sketch uh, the points of this uh, function alpha in r2 then we get this curve which is a circle but in a direction which is anti-clockwise okay so basically this alpha of t represents a circle of radius a so in this particular animation we have this uh, circle of radius 2 okay so we have this circle which is uh, moving in anti-clockwise direction now geometrical shape that this function alpha of t represents is a circle of radius a now let's talk about another function which is a cos t minus a sin t and 0 and in this case once again we take this t to be 0 to 2 pi and when we start sketching uh, this function uh, the geometry represented by this function then once again it is going to give me a circle of radius a and once again in this particular case in this particular graph we are getting circle of radius 2 so geometry of both of these functions is the same but the only difference is basically this direction okay now the point is if the geometrical shape is the same then is there any relationship between these two different functions okay which are representing the same geometrical shape but their uh, functional value or their representation as a function is different now the answer to this question is yes so they are uh, reparameterizations of each other so that's going to be our point of discussion for the next of this module so uh, basically we want to understand what is reparameterization now in the previous two examples we have seen that both of these functions represent a circle but the direction was different but then there are some other ways where two functions represent the same path but they have different representations or different uh, properties so the next property could be for example speed so for this consider an example where we have two players which are basically running around in a circular path okay so both of these players uh, they are moving on in on their own pace okay so now you can see that this black uh, dot which represents one player is moving in a faster pace and this purple dot which is representing the second player is moving in a slower pace now you can see that both are matching up and then uh, this purple dot is basically uh, running across this player so basically geometrically what is happening this uh, blue uh, this black dot is representing one function so let's say this is alpha of t okay and uh, the geometry of this function is basically this elliptical path and this uh, purple dot is uh, of course it should be obtained from some other function because it cannot be alpha their speed is different okay so let's say that uh, function is beta of t and this beta of t and alpha of t are different because uh, the players have different speed okay so that's another uh, way where we are getting the same geometrical shape but the functions are different okay now let's have a look at this situation in a more precise way now what is a curve in r3 it's a function alpha from open interval i to r3 okay so let's say this is contained in r3 okay so we take the points from this interval i we sketch the points and we get this curve in r3 now let's say if we have another way of uh, 
finding the same curve let's call it beta and this interval in general in general is different so this interval is open interval j and in this case uh, the points that we are getting uh, they are the same curve but uh, there could be some differences so for example if alpha is going in this uh, red arrow direction then maybe beta is going in this opposite direction okay or if uh, beta is going in the same direction then it could have different speed okay so alpha and beta have different speed and there could be some other differences but we are concerned about what is the relationship between alpha and beta if there is any relationship okay now luckily there is a relationship between alpha and beta and uh, there exists a function L h of s okay so if this happens that alpha and beta are giving us the same curve then there exists this function h of s such that h is a function from j to i so it takes uh, the points of this interval j to points of this interval t such that uh, we uh, can get beta of s in the following way it is alpha of h of s okay so there are uh, we can see that there are two ways of uh, uh, getting this curve now so one route is you start from this point s apply h get some point of i and then apply alpha and get the points so this is basically alpha of h of s so you start with s apply h so this is this part and then apply alpha and get this alpha of h of s and the second route is this applying beta and so this is beta of s so this function h is such a function that beta of s is equal to alpha of h of s so this function h is basically the main tool which uh, which uh, converts one uh, parametric representation of a curve into another parametric representation of a curve so if we have a curve alpha and if we have a function h from j to i and it is it should be differentiable function uh, in order to uh, you know beta of s to be differentiable and uh, it is a function from open interval j to open interval i then this composite function alpha of h which is a function now from j to uh, r3 because now you start from j apply h and apply alpha and uh, this is basically alpha of h is a function from j to r3 it is known as reparameterization of alpha by this function h now let's consider this example where alpha of t is a, in a particular way defined as square root t t multiplied by square root t 1 minus t and this uh, open interval i is given as 0 to 4 okay so in other words this is open interval uh, 0 to 4 and uh, we are getting this curve alpha of t by applying alpha on the points from 0 to 4 now this j in this case is 0 to 2 so in other words we can say that this is j and this is 0 to 2 so what is this uh, function h doing so this function is defined as h s square so this function is taking 0 and it's giving me output 0 is taking some other point for example 1 is giving me output 1 and it's taking the point for example 2 and it's giving me output 4 so all of the points inside this interval are mapped onto all of the points inside this open interval 0 to 4 so this is the function h of s is equal to s square so what are we doing we first apply h we get some point from this interval 0 to 4 and then we apply alpha so first apply h of s then apply alpha and this is our reparameterization of the curve alpha by this function h of s and this is going to be equal to s square because h of s is defined as s square and we can easily calculate alpha of s square in the following way so when we take the square root of s square we get s when we multiply s square with square root of s square we get s cube and 1 minus s square is over here so these are the three components of the reparameterization of alpha by this function h of s now the next lemma is basically a relationship between the velocity vectors of uh, alpha and beta now as i've told you that uh, alpha and beta uh, represents two different ways of the same geometrical path and one difference could be that uh, these two objects are moving with a different speed and uh, that's why we need to understand what is the relationship between the velocity vectors of alpha of t and beta of t
so this lemma provides us such relationship and uh, this lemma as an implication will tell us for example the difference between the speed and the orientation uh, if alpha is moving in the same direction as beta or not so maybe it could be the case that alpha is moving in that direction and beta is moving in this direction okay so that could possibly one scenario and similarly the other scenario could be the speed of alpha is different from speed of beta so this lemma provides us the exact relationship between the velocity vectors of alpha and beta so the proof of this uh, lemma is an extremely simple process we have this alpha uh, alpha 1 of t alpha 2 of 3 alpha 3 of t and beta of s is defined as alpha of h of s and so we calculate so in this case basically t is alpha of h uh, h of s so that's why we just write down alpha 1 of h of s alpha 2 of h of s and alpha 3 of h of s and uh, if we want to calculate the velocity vector b prime of s its derivative it is going to be uh, the derivative of alpha of h of s okay so we can also write it down as d by ds of alpha of h of s now if we want to calculate uh, the derivative of this composition of alpha of H, alpha and h then we want to use chain rule okay so in this case the first component is the derivative of alpha 1 of h of s derivative of alpha 2 h of s and derivative of alpha 3 h of s so we want to calculate all these three derivatives and uh, we want to use the chain rule from our calculus one course and the chain rule says that it should be equal to the derivative with respect to h of this alpha i and then multiplied with the derivative of h now using this chain rule in the component form we get the first component to be uh, this second component to be this and similarly the third component using chain rule three times on three different components of alpha of h of s and uh, over here we can see that h uh, h prime of s is common in all of these three components so we can write it down outside and what is this expression now this expression is basically alpha of h of s okay so let me rephrase it over here so d by d s alpha of h of s and h prime of s okay so we can also write it down in the following way uh, h prime of s alpha okay so h of s prime now uh, the next lemma we are not going to the proof of this uh, uh, lemma so this this tells us uh, if we have we are getting this uh, uh, velocity vector so it is a vector with the point of application okay so v1 okay v2 v3 let's say these are the vector parts and it has point of application alpha of t so if we want to calculate for any particular function f which is a real valued function from r3 to r and uh, this curve is also contained in r and at this point alpha of t we have this uh, velocity vector alpha prime of t with point of application alpha of t then point is given alpha of t direction is also given so we can talk about the directional derivative of this uh, function f in the direction of alpha prime of t at point alpha of t so if we want to calculate this then this lemma provides us a simple way of calculating this expression and this uh, uh, lemma will be used in our further discussions so this is saying uh, that the directional derivative is equal to uh, the derivative of this composition f of alpha with respect to t now let's discuss some of the important properties of curves that we are going to need in our discussions so the first thing is one-to-one -one curves so how do we uh, describe geometrically what is a one-to-one -one curve so a curve is a function from i to r3 we say that a function is one-to-one -one if alpha one alpha of t1 is not equal to alpha of t2 whenever these t1 and t2 are different so what does that mean geometrically so whenever uh, there will be repetitions whenever alpha of t1 is equal to alpha of t2 then geometrically it means that both coordinates are equal so if this is the curve then at some point okay so it passes through these points and if some point at some point we are getting this repetition then we say that the curve is not one to one because uh, when we are moving in one way okay so let's say we start from this point okay so we move in this way so this is this point is obtained for example for t1 and now we are moving in this direction and then we once again reach the same point for some other value of t because we are now moving in this direction 
So we are getting the same point for different values of t and geometrically it means that if the curve intersects with itself then we say that the curve is not one to one. Similarly, we can talk about periodic curves. So periodic curves, as the name suggests, that uh, they are kind of curves which repeats themselves after some period P. So for example, in this case, you can see that uh, when you start from this point, you will move on, you will move on like this, and then you will come back, and then you will start repeating your trajectory again. And uh, this is done after some particular value of the parameter, let's say P. And if we can find such p for this function alpha, then we say that it is a periodic curve, it is repeating itself, it is repeating its trajectory after some particular value of the parameter. The next important property that we will be needing is the concept of regular curves. So we impose the condition on alpha that it should be differentiable. But unfortunately, this condition is uh, not enough for some of our usage. So we impose some further conditions that the derivative is not going to vanish. The derivative is not going to be 0, 0, 0 for any value of t in the interval i. That's one condition. And the second condition that we impose is that this alpha belongs to ck for some k greater than 1. So what does this mean? It means that it is not only differentiable, but it is k times differentiable. So ck means so functions which are k times differentiable. And we take this k uh, to be any number greater than or equal to 1 and most of the time in differential geometry of uh, curves in R3 we take these curves to be uh, of class C3 so they are three times differentiable so for example consider this curve alpha from R to R3 given in the following way alpha of t is equal to t square t cube and 0 okay now let's see if this curve is a regular curve or not so it says the example asserts that it is not a regular curve. Now the point is the component functions are basically polynomials in T. So they are differentiable. So one thing is very sure that alpha of T belongs to C3. So this condition is satisfied. What about the second condition? So it is not regular. So most probably uh, it is due to the second condition. Now what is alpha prime of T? So alpha prime of T is 2T, 3T square and 0. So is there any value of the parameter for which this uh, uh, velocity vector vanishes? Okay, so to find this value of the parameter, uh, let's put this function to be equal to 0, 0, 0. Of course, it is very obvious from the representation that t is equal to 0 is going to give me that value. But in general, how do we treat uh, with questions like this? So we put it equal to 0. We have three equations to solve now. 2t equal to 0, 3t square equal to 0. And of course, the trivial condition that 0 is equal to 0. And all of these three conditions gives me the same answer, t is equal to 0. So that's one value of the parameter where the derivative vanishes. So alpha prime of 0 is equal to 0 and hence it is not a regular curve. And similarly, we can uh, check for other examples that whether this uh, given curve is regular or not. Now this is uh, the end of our discussion. So in this discussion, we uh, discuss two important concepts. So one is the reparameterization of a curve. So reparameterization means that the same geometrical curve, so the same geometrical path can be represented with many, many different functions. So in other words, we have seen that if alpha is one uh, way of defining the same geometrical path and beta is another way, then there is a function h of s such that this beta of s is equal to alpha of h of s. And this h of s has only one condition on it that it should be differentiable. So we can take as many differentiable functions of one variable as we want and hence we can write down uh, infinitely many parametric representations of the same curve in R3. And the, uh, the second important thing that we discussed is some of the properties of the curve, so especially uh, the regular curve condition that we will be imposing in some of our future discussions. So that is the, the end of our discussion on the curves.